All right, all you mentees, you asked for it. The DC event in Collected Editions reading order. So please stay tuned. Now, before I get started, I do want to give a huge shout out and thank you to our patrons that voted for this. Every month I have a poll on our Patreon site where our patrons vote on what reading order I should be working on next. And next month's is already up, I believe, in August. It's either Batman or Superman. So if you want a chance at voting for those or for reading orders every month, check out our Patreon. All that this is in the description. All of that information is in the description down below. And we do have different tiers. There's access to different things uh, depending on the tier that you join. But let's go ahead and get started. This is the DC event in collected editions reading order. That's a that's right. I did Marvel events last month, so I guess DC is next. So we're going to start it all with, of course, the one book that kicked it off. Now, one could argue that there were crossovers before uh, this particular storyline, but this is the event that kicked off all the events at DC. This is Crisis on Infinite Earths, where the different Earths are being destroyed by the Anti-Monitor, and the heroes from different Earths are teaming up together to stop it. And, I, and seriously, yes, there have been crossovers between the JSA and JLA, but much like the Marvel event crossovers, there are certain rules to this. Like, we're not going to have the Lonely Place of Dying, because that was just a crossover between Batman and Teen Titans. Or we're not going to have Superman Panic in the Sky, because it didn't involve really all of the DC characters. However... I'm also not going to have things like Kingdom Come, because Kingdom Come is almost like an Elseworld tale. So it doesn't really, it's not really an event, as much as I wanted to add it on here. But I may sneak it in where to read it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But this is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Available in trade paperback, deluxe edition, in a box set. And of course, my favorite edition to own it, because I love George Perez's artwork in this absolute edition. Now, something I like to tell people about right after reading Crisis on Infinite Earth, if you want to see the new status quo of the DC Universe, check out the history of the DC Universe. Marv Wolfman and George Pettis. However, this has been retconned so many times, it's so outdated, but it's always fun to go back and read those. And then, this is a really cool collection. I'm so glad I kept it. I almost sold it because I was thinking, oh, maybe one day we'll have an actual omnibus of this stuff. This is the crossover classics featuring Marvel vs. DC, uh, the original crossover events. Before, the, of course, the classic Marvel vs. DC of the 90s, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. But, for example, you get this amazing crossover here with Uncanny X-Man vs. the New Teen Titans. Next up, we have Legends. This is uh, John Ostrander. And, of course, John Byrne. And it's pretty much, yeah, the very first event right after post-Crisis. It was about a year after Crisis. Uh, hell, not even a year after Crisis that this event came out. So, led by John Ostrander, who at the time was writing Suicide Squad. So, it features members of the Justice League, primarily. And, of course, it's all dark side. And I can't give away what happens at the end. Reagan, man. But anyway, it was a big deal that I'm surprised that this never got a hardcover. There, there was another edition that came out after this. This is, I think, this is the second printing of the trade paperback. And then about a year later, in 1988, we got Millennium. I think this is the latest trade paperback edition of this. And this is all Steve Englehart. And this is a pretty interesting story. It's, it's almost like the Sleepers or the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. You never know who to trust. Some of our superheroes and or some of their allies are double agents. So they're like sleeper agents and are betraying the superheroes. That's what this event was. And like I said, in about 1988. And then we get this beautiful masterpiece right here. And this is the Cosmic Odyssey. This is Jim Starlin. And Mike Mignola, I'm surprised we never got an absolute edition of this. This is available in trade paperback, um, and it is available in this deluxe edition. And it is a beautiful book. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of Mignola because of this event. New Gods, the Justice League, the rest of the DC superheroes. What else can I say? And it's Jim Starlin. I mean, this is the guy that gave us Infinity Gauntlet. And the time he was, uh, yeah, he was writing a lot of uh, DC books. Give us a uh, Death in the Family. 
So that's what this is. Taking us to Invasion. This is Bill Mantlo and Keith Giffen, along with this kind of no-name at the time, Todd McFarlane, doing this crossover event where a bunch of aliens have kind of teamed up and they're coming to destroy the heroes of Earth. Um, I don't think McFarlane finishes out the series. I think it's uh, Bart Sears. Now, this and Legends and Millennium all had what is known as the Red Skies tie-ins, meaning that they were crossing over into the Justice League, they were crossing over into Hawkman and Green Lantern. Um, so the, there really isn't a collection of these. This is only available in trade paperback with everything as of this video. Maybe two years later when you're watching this video, who knows, we might have a Legends or a Millennium or Invasion Omnibus. Now what's interesting, one of my favorite things about this is the design of the aliens here, these guys. Uh, Rob Liefeld took that and Chris Claremont in issue 245 of Uncanny X-Men, and they kind of made a mockery of the story. The story was also redone for the Justice League Unlimited series, which is one of my favorite cliffhangers. Now, this is where I would be telling you to read Armageddon 2001, but, uh, yeah, there's no collection of that as of yet, as of this video. There's not a trade paperback. Uh, there's not a deluxe hardcover or an omnibus, and I know the series is uh, not well loved, but who knows, maybe one day. So, leads us into War of the Gods, which is kind of like the last hoorah of George Perez's run on Wonder Woman, who he was still writing it, and he did the miniseries of War of the Gods. There is an omnibus that collects everything. But I, uh, I passed on it because I have the third Wonder Woman omnibus by George Pettis. And it has the Wonder Woman stories and the War of the Gods story. So I'm okay with that. And this event took place in 1991. So now we're in the age of the 90s where more and more events are happening. Except not in Collected Edition because Eclipso the Darkness Within happens before this storyline right here. And this, of course is the death of Superman. Now, why is this a DC event? Well, because every damn DC character makes an appearance in this comic book. Yeah. Worth it for that upgrade to the page fold out there. Yeah, and even the return, and there's repercussions that happen because of his return. I mean, something happens to Green Lantern, and then eventually Green Arrow because of Superman coming back. And it even has ties to Infinite Crisis. And a little bit of retcon, but that's okay. But, I mean, this is the big selling event. I mean, the sales were down, and DC decided, hey, let's kill off Superman, have him replaced. And, I mean, I think everybody that, even people that don't read comic books knew what this event was. And, of course, when DC saw that doing something like killing one of their heroes pumped up the cells, why not cripple one of their heroes? And that's where this comes in. And this is Batman Nightfall. The crossover event, of course, where Bane, a new villain that just showed up in Vengeance of Bane one-shot, comes in and breaks Batman's back. Now, when I do these, I normally don't talk about spoilers. But damn, this thing was like 20 plus years ago. And the title, The Death uh, and Return of Superman kind of spoils that. And I figure by now everybody knows what happens to Batman's back. But this is collected in trade paperback format, big thick trades, and an omnibus edition. So it's been available a lot of times. And that takes us to Zero Hour Crisis in Time. This is the omnibus edition. There is a standard size hardcover and of course the original trade paperback. And this is pretty much DC's editorial saying, okay, we fixed multiple Earths, but time traveling is getting ridiculous. We have too many old characters alive from the JSA. We need to fix all of this. So that's what this is. Crisis in time, zero hour. Regardless of how people felt about it, that was the original idea behind it. Let's fix the timelines. No more multiple Earths, as of Crisis on Infinite Earths. As of Crisis in Time, no more time travel to make it easier. So, that's what this is. Leading us to an event that nobody really talks about. This is Mark Wade's Underworld Unleashed, and it stars this character named Neron, 
who you know plays a pretty big role in this and then later on in the DC universe uh, but this is around the time I think 1995 is when this originally came out and I'll put where what what years it was this is only available in trade paperback by the way it's never been collected in deluxe edition there's a couple of printings of the trade paperback but yeah this is all you get from that era Underworld Unleashed like I said Nobody really, I don't hear enough people talk about this. And this has some of the earlier uh, Howard Porter artwork here. Before uh, he did Justice League with Grant Morrison. Okay, okay, I snuck it in here. Go ahead and read Kingdom Come because it is that badass. I know it's not an event, but who cares? Now, I do say that nobody talks about this series, but I think at least this one, people do talk about. This is The Final Night. This is a huge event where the Sun Eater is coming and destroying the Sun. So it is up to our heroes here on Earth to reignite it. This is getting, I think it's a deluxe hardcover uh, at the beginning of next year. Or it, at least a trade paper, or I'm sorry, or at least a standard size hardcover with more of the comics collected in there. So this kind of shows us what happens. It's a big important part with what happens with Hal Jordan right after the events of Emerald Twilight. So it, I think it's a big thing to read in the DC. I mean, we still talk about the Sun Eater in the DC universe. And here is the event from the 90s. DC versus Marvel, where you got to vote who won in these fights. And of course... This was originally supposed to be an omnibus or an oversized hardcover, but all they released really was this trade paperback. Uh, in this trade paperback, it is it is rare. It's one of the most rare ones out of all these. Um, and But it collects the entire event as well as the Doctor Strange Fate number one and then all the little things back here in the back, the extras, like the cards you would get at the comic book shop. It, it was a really fun event, and I wish they would give us a proper omnibus of this. We don't have, I mean, there's no amalgam collection or what was it, the access, but this event was so fun. Regardless of whether it was right or wrong, who would actually win in a fight between Wolverine and Lobo. So here's DC 1 million. This is a Grant Morrison storyline. Um, now, this takes place in 1998. However,. In 1997, we did have another storyline that has not been collected, and that is Genesis. It mainly started off as a Superman storyline, then New Gods got involved, but it kind of became a DC event. And then, um, for some reason, yeah, DC has never given us a trade paperback or uh, hardcover, but then we have DC 1 million. So we do have this omnibus. Uh, it's Grant Morrison and all the issues, kind of like the Zero issues. They all went to Superman 1 million, Batman 1 million. Starman 1 million. I love that issue. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a, a possible future event that happens within the pages of the DC characters. And then in 1999, we got Day of Judgment. And why don't I have that trade paper back here? Well, that's because I let my brother borrow it. So I don't have it with me. That's embarrassing. But yes, in 1999, there is a trade paper back available, Day of Judgment. Uh, and then we get our worlds at war. I'm really surprised that DC never took this event and made it into a big omnibus edition. This started off as a Superman story. It's all led by Jeff Loeb. Uh, it's got Mike Waringo, Ed McGinnis on artwork, and it just kind of blew up into a big DC event. There's some characters that die in here. And this is really where DC starts going dark. Like... There are things that happen within these pages that DC starts just doing dark things that are, are later talked about in the Infinite Crisis omnibus. And speaking of dark, here's Joker's Last Laugh. If you know anything about this crossover event, you know what happens to, well, Dick Grayson and what he does. But I'm not going to spoil it. But anyway, this is my custom-bound copy of Joker's Last Laugh. I had the trade paperback, so it is available in trade paperback. But it didn't collect all the little stories. I'm a big fan of this storyline. And I really liked what you know, what, what was happening in the pages of Robin and Nightwing. And I feel like that was so important to read. Why didn't they collect them in the trade paperback? Because the trade paperback just collects the miniseries. So I custom bound it. But it is available in trade paperback. And then comes this beauty right here. These books, I swear, the DC versus Marvel books are just it's so hard to get because they only had one printing. This is the absolute version of JLA Avengers by Kurt Busiek and George Pettis. 
And even though it's not every character from Marvel or every character from DC, I think it belongs on this list because it was a huge event at the time. I mean, they DC and Marvel hadn't done a huge event like this since the mid-90s, so it was good to see them together again, even if it was just for a mini-series. And it's just good to see George Pettis. This is available um, in trade paperback format. There was a smaller trade of this. And then, of course, in this wonderful and beautiful absolute format which yeah this one's kind of hard to find and of course to the story that when i said dark this is probably as dark as dc gets uh for the time anyway this is identity crisis and this is the story that's written by brian Meltzer, uh, who had written novels before crime novels and it is just betrayal and the entire dc universe begins to shake up because of this and the events that happen in here have a ramification for DC in the following year. Now, this has been available in trade paperback. It's been available in Absolute Edition. Why don't I own the Absolute Edition? Because this is one of my least favorite stories. We've done an old reader, new reader on it. And yeah, I just, I was never a big fan. I'm not even the biggest fan of Rag Morales, who draws the artwork in here. And it's interesting how we go from one of my least liked events to my most favorite beloved like i love this event i know i've talked about it but this is infinite crisis available in absolute format trade paperback format this ops awesome awesome omnibus and if you've not read it oh man at least read crisis on infinite earths before reading this because it is so freaking awesome some of the biggest baddest changes happen within the pages here I, oh man, yeah, if you, if you want to know how I really feel about it, uh, check out our old reader, new reader. This collects, this omnibus is awesome though, it collects all the events leading up to it, all the miniseries including Countdown, The Ranthanagar War, Villains United, and Day of Judgment, so I, there's no reason not to own this, it's on its third, uh, fourth printing now. Then of course, in the aftermath of Infinite Crisis, we have 52, this is the weekly comic book that came out all of it is collected in here uh except for the backup pages which was the history of the dc universe whenever i showed off that mark wolfman george Perez trade paperback this had a very similar two page or one page sometimes um little history of the uh, dc universe and the new universe after infinite crisis there's one thing that i always tell people to read as you're reading this before you read the final two issues uh, so weeks 50, 51, and 52, you have to read this. This is World War III, and I have no idea why this was not included in this omnibus. Well, maybe because this had already 52 comics inside of it. But World War III, I feel like, is just as important to read because a lot of things happen in here. A lot of characters die. There's some huge fights that happen that take place within the pages of this storyline here. And it's my guy, my boy, Black Adam. I love sneaking books in there that aren't in the thumbnail. For all of you that watched the entire video, thank you so much. Uh, so this is the DC Universe Origins. This happens right after uh, that new 52, or I'm sorry, that 52 Omnibus and the World War III trade paperback. This is what I was talking about, what was missing from the Omnibus. Are these little two-page origin stories, all written by Mark Wade, with different artwork here, like Ivan Reyes and Del Eagle Sam. Howard Chaikin, Dan Jurgens, Andy Cooper, just to name a few, but it's a really cool way of owning it and not available in the Omnibus Edition. Now we get another Wonder Woman event. This is Amazon's Attack. This happened through the pages of Wonder Woman, then eventually Teen Titans, Justice League, so it was a big DC event. And this is all headed by Will Pfeiffer, who was writing uh, Wonder Woman at the time. Another Jeff Johns Omnibus, another jeff john's event and of course i'm talking about sinestro core war oh my god probably um <laughs> this is probably one of the highlights of the green lantern run that he helped build if you've never read it if you've never read green lantern or just just stop now and read this omnibus that ends with the Sinestro Core War. Of course, the Sinestro Core War was collected in hardcover format and in trade paperbacks and then in fat trades, but this is just... Oh, and then there was an absolute version too. 
but this is the way that I own it and I just love Sinestro Core War. So then DC decides to do another crisis. They figured, okay, we need to do another crisis. This time around, let's do a weekly series that leads up to the crisis. So people were excited. They were like, yeah, we loved 52. And then we got Countdown. And um, yeah, Countdown was a thing, right? There's four trade paperbacks of these. You know, I don't know if we'll ever get an omnibus of this, like 52, but judge for yourself. Just don't go too hard into it, especially if you're fans of Donna Troy or Nightwing or Red Hood. The other book I would recommend to read maybe before Final Crisis, although I don't think Grant Morrison even bothered, was Death of the New Gods. This is, again, Jim Starlin. And it takes place right after, I think, Countdown, uh, Countdown 10 and 9 or something like that. So this all is supposed to lead into Final Crisis. So, Final Crisis. We were coming here. We were counting down, right? This is the big Grant Morrison event. Uh, this omnibus collects all the crossovers, every issue that you need, including the Terror Titans and Titan, Teen Titans. Uh, this is, like I said, all by Grant Morrison. And if I I've, I've, must have read this book like four or five times. It wasn't until like my third read-through that I'm like, all right, you know what? Final Crisis is actually pretty damn good. It's dense and heavy, and there's a lot of things that happen in here. But if you read Batman Rest in Peace, and if you read Seven Soldiers of Victory, um, and then of course Fourth World, I think Fourth World out of anything really helped me. But yeah, this is Final Crisis. And at this moment, I just want to remind you all to please smash that like button. And if you want to take part in our polls, our monthly polls for Old Reader, New Reader, or uh, our reading orders, check out our Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so, and thank you to our existing patrons. So this has a lot of artwork by different creators, George Pettis, Scott Collins, uh, Pete Woods, Doug Mankey, and of course, J.G. Jones, who was drawing the main event at the time, but um, he had some issues with deadlines, so then came in Doug Mankey, but then the art was restored in this. Available in absolute format, trade paperback, hardcover format, and that is Final Crisis. Another crisis, and DC said, hey, you know what? We need another weekly series. And we just got this Mark Bagley guy from Marvel. Let's go ahead, get Kurt Busiek, and do a Trinity weekly series. So it's basically Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, but really it's the entire DC universe. Um, and I don't know which one is more hated this or countdown but there are three trade paperbacks of this again i don't know if there's going to be an omnibus of this jeff johns and i'm not done with him yet blackest night probably the epitome of where all his stories were going in green lantern happening in this pages here with oh man blackest night just a freaking amazing event that years in the making five years in the making since his green lantern rebirth this is where everything was leading to and there's some horrific scenes in here it, there's some wonderful scenes in here reunions and betrayals and just oh my gosh and then the, the lanterns of this just different color spectrum it is such a badass story and he's the one that helms it he's the one that put it together and wrote it and oh man i can't speak high enough of this available in trade paperbacks hardcovers um, and also absolute versions but i highly recommend the omnibus it's huge but you get everything in here including the oversized artwork for those green lantern core issues and of course following up right after blackest night what are you gonna have you're gonna have brightest day right with some hella artwork in here i believe um Scott Clark does some of the artwork in here too, as well as Ivan Rice. Hope I said his name right. That's only taken me years. But yeah, Scott Clark was um, one of the uh, artists on Image uh, Stormwatch. And sadly, he passed away a few years ago. But I remember him. I, I was a big fan of his artwork. So he's one of the artists on this. This, by the way, is available in trade paperbacks. There's three hardcovers that make this up. And then, of course, the omnibus that is currently out of print. Which takes us to Jeff Johns, again, said I wasn't done with him, and still not done with him, Flashpoint. The event that kicks off a new status quo 
re rebooting the entire universe known as the New 52. So this is the event. It's all written by Jeff Johns, drawn by Andy Kubert, available trade paperback in absolute format and an omnibus coming in 2021. So during the New 52, during Justice League, but then it kind of became a huge deal. This is uh, Forever Evil, where the villains replace the heroes in our world. And it's up to Lex Luthor and a few other characters to go ahead and return the world back to order and the way it is. It's all drawn by David Finch. It's got wonderful artwork. I almost put the DC's uh, Future's End here. But I don't know if I would consider that um, an actual event from DC. Uh, there is an omnibus available of that. By the way, this is only available in hardcover trade paperback. There's no absolute. There's not an omnibus, sadly. But, yeah, let me know in the comments down below, by the way, if I should have included Future's End as part of this reading order. Taking us to the Dark Side War. Part of a Justice League, but then it just turned into a huge, huge DC event. And, again... This is Jeff Johns. There's a lot of one-shots here written by other creators like Tom King, Francis Manipal, just to name a few. And yeah, this is pretty much everything that's been building up from the first issue of the New 52 Justice League until this event here. I believe by now it's Jason Fabuk that had taken over the Justice League book. But then DC said, no, nah, you know what? Let's do it again. Let's reboot it one more time. So here is DC Rebirth. Kicking off again another universe, rebooting it. This time returning a beloved character back to us. Uh, this is Gary Frank supplying the artwork. And he's also joined by other artists here. But this reboots it again and this is the current continuity that we're in, the Rebirth years. Now, this is normally where I would show off my Dark Knight's Metal Omnibus, but guess what? Still waiting on it. Two years ago. Two years ago, Scott Snyder said we were going to get an omnibus. And, I, and I've and i yet to buy a trade paperback or deluxe hardcover of any of those Dark Knights medals. So, you know what? I'll wait. So, uh, but here's where you want to read Doomsday Clock. It started in 2017 and literally ended late last year. And I can't flip too much through here. Finally got around to reading it. I may do a, I may do a review of it just because of how much... Uh, the book, you know, how long we waited for it and what it really turned out to be later on. But that's where Doomsday Clock takes place. And, and Dark Knight Metal takes place before this. But since I don't have the omnibus, because there isn't one yet, we'll just get to Doomsday Clock. And then we have this event right here, Heroes in Crisis, where there's betrayal. And there is uh, a lot of fans are pissed off with Tong King for treating some of these characters just messed up. Probably shouldn't have done it, but whatever. It's got beautiful artwork by Clay Mann, though. Only available in this hardcover edition. There's a trade paperback available coming out later this year. And I'm sure because of Clay Mann's wonderful, beautiful artwork, we will get some kind of absolute edition or something. Someday. But this is Heroes in Crisis. Now, as of this video, Year of the Villain is still not out in collected edition, but it should be out shortly. But this takes us to the last event so far that's been collected in collected edition and that is in this hardcover and this is event leviathan uh, all written by brian michael bendis and it's the story of this huge team up i did an overview of this um probably a couple months ago when this originally came out and like i said it is only available uh in this standard size hardcover so it's pretty much these characters teaming up to solve a crime that involves superman so what started off as a superman story grew bigger than it was and it became a dc event now, most of these books are available from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the reading order. Let me know what I left out. Well, with the exception of the books that I don't physically have here. Thanks a lot, Manuel. But yes, let me know what I left out. If you would have added something, if... Really, Kingdom Come, if it fit in there. I don't know. I, I left it out because it's not really an event. But anyway, 
Check out our Patreon if you want to vote. The next reading order has been voted on, and it is Batman. So I will be working on that in the next coming weeks. That's going to be definitely a multi-part. But stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you love reading orders, let me know what else you want to see. And to check out our Patreon, just click on the link in the description of this video. We have different tiers available. We have different tiers available. So it might be worth a check out. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you again to our existing patrons. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We're having a watch party on Friday night, the amazing Amanda and I. So stay tuned to our social media for information on that and how to join us to watch the first episode of the Umbrella Academy Season 2. Now, more importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to all of you.